He lives in a castle in Scotland. His QLA track record has produced over $50 billion in equity for entrepreneurs since 1993. He's the founder of an investment consortium specializing in facilitating transactions. He's Dan Pena, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume six. Enjoy. All right, let's kick it off with rule number one, man up. All of you guys probably had bicycles with trainer wheels, right? On the little wheels on the side of the bicycle when you ride it and you didn't fall off. And then when the, your parents took the trainer wheels off, what happened? You fell over on your head. And what did your mother probably, maybe your father, oh, poor baby, poor baby, and rub your head. When I fell off my bike, my dad hit me. <laughs> you f little weenies, get up. Stand up, stop crying. Smart man. Yeah, I mean, man up. And now look at me. I mean, I wish love got the job done. I swear to God I do. But it doesn't. And God doesn't get the job done either. God helps those who help them himself. Rule number two, love what you do. What's the fun part in your life? I, I'm having fun right now. I love what I do. Most of you in this audience don't like what you do. That's why, with the greatest respect, that's why Michael can help you. Most of the people on the 87, Gallup poll did a, a survey in 2016. 87% of the people on the planet, not counting all the uh, Biafra, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ghana, uh, Kenya kind of countries, 87% of the planet hate what they do. They've checked out. They're just taking up time, waiting for retirement. I'm sure some of you in this room can, can, can uh, you know, relate to that. 87% have checked out. Now, to me, if you've checked out, I mean, what the hell? Jesus. And you're all going to live older. The, the 70 is the new 50, they tell me. I don't, I don't even feel 50. I feel 30. I act 30. I got more energy than probably the whole room. Because well, I, I love dragging you sorry guys and gals across the goal line. My wife, lovely wife Sally, says the reason I have arthritis in my back is because you're getting heavy now that I'm getting older, dragging you across the goal line. But I will kick, spit, slap. I will do whatever it takes. And when I say I do whatever it takes, I mean it. I will insult you, your mother, your religion. I know how to get you to the top of the podium at the Olympics. Not for a bronze medal, not for a silver, but for a gold. If we're not going for gold, don't waste my time. Rule number three, be courageous. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what if you could accomplish in the world today if you weren't afraid? If you weren't afraid of what people thought of you, said about you, whispered about you, what could you accomplish? A lot more than you've accomplished today. A lot more. Why do we care what people think? Why do we care what people say? And more importantly, why do we care what people whisper? Because we have no self-worth. We have next to little self-esteem. And we have no self-confidence. And how do we get that way? Yes, mommy and daddy. Life expands and contracts with courage. When was the last courage, uh, courage type thing that you did in your lifetime? Walk against the red light? Whisper that your spouse, your significant other is a bitch or a, a, a bastard? When was the last time you exhibited some courage? Some of you have to go back a long, long way. Some of you never. I said yesterday, I cannot believe that there are people in this audience that have never been spanked, never had a, a harsh word said to them by their parents, never got in a fight on the school grounds. I can't believe that. And you wonder why you are the, the way you are. Now, I'm not saying that um, being a high-performance person is beating the shit out of everybody, but it doesn't hurt. Rule number four, push the envelope. When I was growing up, contrary to what you were growing up, I'm 13 years old and I'm wrestling with lions. That's me and Jackie the Lion, Jackie the Lion from the MGM, Metro Golden Mayor. That's the first lion, Jackie. So I'm not afraid of animals to this day. I'm wrestling, my mother's over here out of camera screaming and yelling, afraid that the lion is gonna eat me. 
And then fast forward 40, 50 years, there we are with tigers. You can see Sally in the background there. Yes, people get hurt on these things. Yes, people get killed on these things. That's why there's only three people in that picture. And Sally and I went trekking with the lions a few years ago. Because I'm continuing to push the envelope. I never want to be comfortable doing anything. Also, if you want to learn to have more confidence, check out my 254 series. It's free. The link is in the description below. But no one does know initially, up front. You have to try. You have to swing at the plate. A kid like you, if you had to keep track of seven days a week, 24 hours a day, what you do. Rule number five, master selling. If you're in sales, make 300 cold calls a day. 300 cold calls a day. And for those 300 you, cold calls a day. Correct. Will it still work nowadays? Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. We got kids doing it, it right now. Question. We even got some lazy Dutch kids doing it right now. Just pick up the phone. Yeah, yeah. Make and I call. mean, for a, for a Dutch kid, 24 years old, to make 20 cold calls a day, you'd think it's a big deal. There's nobody teaching sales in this country that I'm aware of that tells you to make 300 cold calls a day. In fact, there's nobody on the planet that I'm aware of that tells you to make 300 cold calls a day. I had a guy just do a $50 million deal. He said, Dan, if you had just told me I was 2,000 cold calls away from my first deal, I would have sent you a check for 20 grand and said thank you and I wouldn't have come to the castle. Rule number six, model success. And life is not a journey. It's only if you're a meathead, clubfoot, retard. And if for those of you, I'm not trying to, if some of you are, have uh, issues with retardation, I'm not trying to, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. It's a model. You find someone, as I said yesterday after, where, where he or she is where you want to be. And then you model them. You mimic them. You copy them. Same way you would if you want to be a footballer. Same way you want to be if you want to be um, uh, a golfer. You don't copy some monkey uh, that can't break 100, do you? Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle had this figured out two, 3,000 years ago. What the f*** happened? Why did we stop? These are arguably the first mentor-mentee relationships that existed on the planet. I'm not teaching anything new, guys, gals. I give credit to the man that I copied Andrew Carnegie came up with a QLA model and didn't call it QLA because he, was a, he, was, he could have been Dutch, really. He was a me, mean, cheap person that didn't want to spend money, so he didn't allow equity in his transactions. He only used debt, as you would say, debt. So he would still own it all, and that's all I did. He was doing this 140 years ago, what I do. Rule number seven, have a dream. But if you believe, if you believe in yourself, I had to go on. Obama again, Obama. Uh, I had a dream! I'm running down Torrance Boulevard, 1983, and I had just looked at a magazine called The Rob Report, which I recommend that you all subscribe to. And it had uh, castles on islands, and, the, uh, and I said, uh, I'm gonna buy a castle on an island. That was March, 83. I moved into the Guthrie Castle, September 1, 84. Had no way to pay for it. Didn't have a, well, I had a pot to piss in. But um, 15 months later, was that 15 or 17 months? Anyway, from March to September 1 the next year. So I had an Obama moment, and I wasn't even cracked up. I had a dream. So even though I make fun of these guys that have a dream, but I've had it myself. But if you don't have a dream, guess what? It can't come true. And you're never going to exceed your highest expectation. You will never, for those of you that want to make a million dollars, you're never going to make a million and one. Rule number eight, surround yourself with greatness. What can you do to build self-confidence and self-esteem? You are who you hang around with. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. The first, self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. Who are you around the first seven or eight years of life? Mom, maybe dad. Uh, older brother, uh, uncle, a uh, grandmother, right? What the hell do they know about building self-esteem? They don't know anything. And now, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Who do you go hang with? 
pretty chill with. And, I, and, I, and he, he and I, we disagree about a few things, but Bill Gates doesn't hang. Steve Jobs, who I knew, didn't chill. Um, uh, Warren Buffett doesn't hang. Elon Musk doesn't hang. And I go down the list of people that don't hang. Very few people are happy with what they're doing. And if you want to build self-esteem, deal with people that have high self-esteem. Rule number nine, impact lots of people. For those of you that want to save the world, go make a bunch of money and then go save the world. Or more recently, the last four, five, six years, I've said, figure out a system, a process, a procedure, an invention that changes a billion lives and you'll become you know, a multi-billionaire, i.e. Facebook, Zuckerberg. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is hold yourself accountable. This young kid that came to me a year and a half ago, his goal, his dream in his life was to finish number one university champion archer in Britain. What's the best you've ever done? 20th in a regional meet, he says to me. So we set up a program and I beat him like a rented mule. That's him receiving the first place a couple months ago in Britain. The little skinny sh He looks like a, a little Nimrod uh, snowflake, because he is. But he was firing six, seven hundred arrows a day. Most of you couldn't fire 50. Most of you in this room have never been held accountable for anything in your life. And look at the result. I've got a special bonus clip from Dan on how to want it bad enough that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching the video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, where do you need to be more courageous? Number two, which three people can you model success from? And number three, what is your big dream? You've already read, some of you, that I am the creator of teenage multimillionaires from scratch and the, man, the um, mentee that's the CEO of the largest deal in recorded history, the $500 billion deal, Neom, the city of the future. I created them both. Just like God with clay, with these two hands, I made them just like God. And everybody in between, which covers everybody in this room, teenage multimillionaire, no school, no high school, no junior high school, no college, 17 years old. Why not you? The answer is it could be you. But he's a hard working, 140 hour a week worker. Not an 80, a good, straight, a good drink and a stiff kill everybody in this room. And you're nodding your head, yeah. But some of you will just settle for the good f Most guys come to me because I'm the alpha male father they never had. Most young guys come to me because they can't get their willy wet. Now what the f does the world come to? You gotta come to a raging, crazy old f man, 72 years old, to get your willy wet. What's happened? Almost everything bad. That's what's happened. If you want more Dan Pena, check out his top 50 rules video. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. This is what I'm training you to be like. The four horsemen of the motherfucking apocalypse. Adolf Hitler might be the highest performance guy that ever was born on the planet.